up, everybody? Welcome back to Big Things Kentucky. What's going on with you, Clutch? What's going on? Have no fear. Big Things is here. I'm Coach Butte, my main man, Coach TB on assignment. Coach Truck, what's good, my guy? Man, got a big week coming up this week, Coach. We got the Ooh, game got of the century right in our own backyard at Lesson Catholic. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You can't get in, but tell a friend to tell a friend. It makes you tune in to see some of the best talent in the state. My guy, Ben Johnson, taking on Reed Shepard and company. Coach, I, I don't know what to do, Coach. I, I, this, this is big, Coach. This is big. Coach, I'm going to take a moment, man, to say uh, our condolences to Mark Allen's family, his mom, Ch Chanel, his grandmother, Donna. Uh, his father and all their family members to lose this young man in our community. Uh, Markel's a great kid. Me and you both had the privilege of coaching him. We've seen the talent he had. Uh, it's sad to lose his life at 17 years old, Coach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, to all our young men out there, please, please, God, be a better way, man. We're losing too many of you. Coach, we, we coached too many young men who, who went down a different path. A lot of them are doing great because it's got to be a way uh, – there's so much potential there, you know, and it's just finding that right outlet, man. I don't know what we can do or how we can we just got to find them some way, some outlet to, 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 to move on past this, Coach. I agree with you 100%, Coach. So it's got to be something better for these kids, Coach. You know, we talk, spoke to several people about maybe sitting down and talking, doing something. Uh, uh, they be the Gatewood is a young lady we be a way to, 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 to bring our community closer together. We're losing too many young men, too many unsolved yeah. murders. It's crazy. So, it, man, it's yeah. families in our prayers because our communities in our, in our prayer. Yeah. Uh, the Douglas Park Bearcats families in our prayer for losing such a, a town of young men because way, way too soon. Coach, man, on, on a brighter note, this week, man, we catch up with second-year Winford County girls head coach, Coach Eric Daniel, you know, famous for playing in UK and doing lots of other things. We caught up with him to see how things are going coaching girls basketball. And we're here with former UK. Today, standout current Wolfer County girls coach Eric Daniels. Coach Daniels, thanks for joining us today, man. Oh, no problem, man. Glad to be here. Now, coach, man, you taking over the Wolfer County Yellow Jacks. This is your second year. Now, you basically rebuilding this year, but we understand how COVID has been hitting these young teams. Kind of tell us what you've been going through this year, coach. Well, last year I lost eight varsity players off my team, so that. That kind of hurt us. Um, six seniors, two juniors. Um, so we're kind of rebuilding. We got um, – I start three freshmen this year. So um, I think COVID has set us back a lot because we didn't get a chance to prepare like we normally would. Also, with us having two quarantines during the season, we kind of had to start all over and reteach the ladies um, um, the basic fundamentals again. And I've had to simplify things a lot this year just because we don't have that time in the gym with them. But it's a learning experience for everybody. That coach, you speak about your young team. Currently, right now, you're led by uh, three young ladies. Uh, Naya Rose, after 11.4 points a game. You got Haley Hood, after 10.1 points a game. And then you got Devin, uh, Devian Champion, after 10.3 points a game. Uh, how are those young ladies doing? And who else are you looking to lean on? Well, Devin Champion, she's the heart and soul of our team. She's our interior presence. Um, last week against Lexington Catholic, she sustained a knee injury. So, we don't know if we'll have her for the rest of the season. I'm hoping it's not an ACL, but, I mean, she's the toughest kid in, in Kentucky. Um, she does all the dirty work that nobody likes to do. Um, she's our heart and soul. All the girls lean on her for support. But, with, but without her, those other two players, Nia Rose and Haley Hood, are definitely going to have to step up and, and probably have a bigger load on them for the rest of the season. Um, Nia Rose, she's a knockdown shooter from the perimeter. Um, Haley Hood, she's our other senior. So, um we just have to lean on those ladies to try to finish out the rest of the season out strong. Now, Coach, man, I mean, you know, you everybody knows about your success playing in UK and what you've done and, and, you know, all of your successes. Just what got you into girls basketball and who are some of the coaches that influenced you as far as your coaching style and what you're doing? 
Well, my kids kind of got me in, in, into girls basketball. I, I have two daughters that that play. Uh, one's a senior now. Um, she went back to Bryan Station this year. And my younger daughter, she's over at Crawford um, playing ball. So um, they kind of inspired me to get into girls basketball because I feel that girls, they don't get, get the same opportunities as the guys do. And with my presence and my knowledge of the game, kind of gives those girls a little more inspiration, knowing that you do have males that support you and are, are, are going to teach you how to play ball the right way and not to just play like girls. And my biggest influence right now in, in, in girls coaching, you know, um, Kobe Bryant, he was a big influence to me because I, I saw the things that he was starting to do with girls basketball, um, trying to advance it a little bit. And also Coach Brian Hall over there at Station and, and Coach Ransom, those guys, they kind of brought me into girls basketball here in Lexington. And um, I just kind of went from there. Okay. You speak about having a, a young team and, and doing a lot of fun, having to do a lot of fundamental stuff, building them up. Now, you also coach AAU basketball. Are you taking some of those things you have for AAU basketball to implement them with these young ladies you have this year? Well, this year I've had to because, you know, with AAU, it's kind of on the fly. You kind of – you don't get to have a scouting report all the time. You just kind of get out there and play. And this year I've given my players a little bit more freedom than I would in the past and kind of let them play because I know that we didn't have the practice time to prepare like we normally do. So our execution of the plays aren't as sharp as I would like. But um, I've given them the freedom with our skill work and developmental work and practice um, with Coach Troy Adams and Daryl Watkins and um, Glenn Edwards. They've, um, they've advanced our girls a lot individually because now they can make decisions on their own without coming to coach, always asking what to do. Now, that's kind of interesting. So would you say that coaching AAU kind of is an advantage or has helped in this COVID environment, as far as, like you said, going on the fly? Oh, yeah, I think it is an advantage um, for this season because, um, you know, you go to those tournaments, you'll you'll play four or five games in a weekend, and um, you really don't know who you're playing against. And kind of this season, I've had to schedule games a day in advance, and you really don't get a scout report on the team. You kind of just got to get out there and play and kind of think on the fly. So I think my experience in AAU has helped me tremendously this year on the court. Okay. So it's good to see you come back and get back to the community. You kind of set up roots here. You're from the Ohio area. Uh, what's some of the changes you hope to implement in, in Kentucky basketball to help get Kentucky over the hump? I, I just wanted to be able to compete with other states and other places around the United States because right now Kentucky is looked upon as one of the weaker places for, for basketball, especially for girls' basketball. I mean, there is some talent here, but it has to be cultivated and molded properly. So these girls will have the same type of opportunities that the rest of these girls around the country are having. You know, we get maybe one or two D1 players a year to come out of Kentucky. I would like that to grow to over 10 to 15 every year. Um, so hopefully um, we can spread these roots around the state and, and get girls playing uh, and, and and get to teaching the girls the proper way to how to play and how to compete so they can get these chances on a higher stage. Now, we've been interviewing some of the top programs around the state. And one thing we notice is like the, the better programs, they have these grassroots leagues that they're building from the ground up. Is that something that you're trying to implement at Whitford County to help build your program? Oh, yeah. Right now, um, COVID kind of put a halt on that for, the, for, the, um, for this season. But I plan on trying to get most of my girls that play high school and middle school ball to, to play some travel ball this year just so they can get that court time that they need. Because a lot of them, they don't play enough and they don't get a chance to play that five on five and get that experience that they need. So um, they're a little bit behind by the time they get to the high school level. So um, hopefully we can do that this year. And uh, in the future, I do plan on starting some girls leagues in Wolford and around the Lexington area, just so we can improve the IQ of our players. Hey, Eric, man, we really appreciate you sitting down with us, man. Like I say, you've been a big pivot role in, in the Lexington area behind the scenes and coaching football, coaching AAU basketball. All your teams have had a lot of success. So man, wish you nothing but the best. At, uh, at Woodford County, man, getting those young ladies turned around down there. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate it. And great interview, Coach Dan. You know, Coach Daniels always did AA with boys, and I think he touched a little bit with the girls, so it's good to see him in coaching, trying to get back and help out, help our young ladies out in the area. Wish him nothing but the best coaching, and good luck to dope Coach Daniels. Woodford County, give his man time to turn this around. He'll get it turned around. All right, Coach, man. Come Saturday, like we said earlier, we got the – it depends on how you rank them. The number one versus number two team. Going to take it on. That will be on prep spin. We caught up with Coach Valentine, who used to coach at LCA, so he's familiar with Big Things County. 
We caught up with him. Your, your Jaguars are undefeated right now. You rock stars of basketball. How's it going with you, Cole? It's going really good. It's been uh, it's been a fun season so far. I've got a really good team, great group of guys, and they're a lot of fun to to coach and to be around. And uh, you know, we're just trying to keep things going here one at a time, and hopefully finish strong. Well, coach, man, first of all, a lot of people may know you came from LCA. You had a lot of success at LCA. Had some great teams. You have you had your, your own sort of start over Cal Rose, who started playing for you in the eighth grade and had a, 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 a pretty stellar career over his four or five years there playing for you. So, I mean, so de dealing with him, has that helped you in this situation here? With yeah, there's no question, you know, in terms of just going through, a, you know, with the Division One player. You know, I had Matt Rose the first year I was there who went to uh, – had a great career there at Lipscomb and then – Kyle obviously is doing well at uh, Liberty and Carter Henderson at North Florida. So I had three guys that have kind of gone through this process and um, you know, it sure makes, uh, sure makes me look a lot smarter than I, than I probably am. You know, when you've got uh, guys like I've got right now, you know, they, they clean up a lot of mistakes and um, you know, just like I said, just really good kids, you know, and that's the common thread. That's what everybody wants to know, you know, compare the kids, you know, they are, they're all good in, in their different ways. But uh, in terms of just being great kids with high character, all four of those guys played at a high level and were just absolutely terrific uh, young men. Now, Reed played the year before you got there. Now, when you got here, did you see this immediately? Like, did he automatically, where you was like, wow, I got something here? Yeah, I mean, I knew he had the potential to be something, you know, something special. Um you know, he just, he's just young, you know, and he's still young. You're looking at a sophomore right now, you know, 16 years old. And, um, you know, he's just a, he's just a kid, you know, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. Um, at the end of the day, he's still just a kid, man. He's a sophomore and he continues to get better, but you know, he's obviously, he has some, some God given things that, uh, you can't coach, you know, he can, he can fly and, you know, he shoots all these left-handed hook shots and up and under, and he can hang in the air and flip it up over his head. You know, that's things that most kids can go, you know, when I played, I could go in the driveway and work on that for my entire life and I'm not going to be able to do it. You know, he just, but, but he's got a really good mindset right now. He's matured, uh, you know, mentally probably more than anything and changed his approach to the game. And I think that's really benefited him. Coach, man, 18 and 0 on the season, 7 and 0 in the, on, in, the uh, in your region, 2 and 0 in the district, coach. That's remarkable for uh, for your first year there. How, how has it been? And uh, I mean, what do you attribute your success to? I know you got a great kids. What do you also attribute your success to? Well, I think I, you know, number one, you said it. You know, it's it's the players that I have. You know, not only do I have Reed, but I've got Ryan Davidson, his first cousin, that's averaging over twenty a game. You know, he shoots uh, over seventy percent from the field. You know, but he's an, he's another sophomore, tre tremendous talent. Then I got some guys that just really, really shoot the ball well. You know, guys shooting over 40 percent from the three, and and they make read better. You know, because teams can't really just stand there and stare, stand in the lane and and stare at read. They have to worry about those other guys uh, standing in the corner making threes. You know, but we've just got they're just really unselfish, and it's it's something that I don't think you you don't see that a ton anymore, and that they genuinely do not care um, if they score or not. You know, Reed's had games where he's had 53. And then he's had games where he's had 15, but he's had 17 assists. And uh, it's just really unique this day and age that you have a group of kids uh, that are bought in to all they want to do is win. Now, Coach, Saturday, you'll be kind of, I guess, having a little homecoming, you know, coming back into Lexington, taking on your used-to-be rival, Lexington Catholic, and Ben Johnson, another prolific scorer, Coach, man. Kind of tell us how you're going to address this game, Coach. Is, is that – do we play Lexington Catholic on Saturday? I didn't realize that. <laughs> no, but it, it's been uh, – I tell you, it's been crazy the amount of attention that this game is uh, – this game has gotten. Um, you know, we've got – we play McCoury Central tomorrow, and then we play a really, really good Ashland team on mm -hmm. Friday that was, you know, coming off an undefeated season, has majority of their team back, and they added a couple guys. <clears throat> so, um, you know, we're going to approach it just like we have every other game this year. And we literally just talk about going one and no uh, every day out, you know, and this team has done a tremendous job of staying focused. Um, 
But, you know, what I love about this swing for us is this is the closest to a regional tournament experience, I think, that you can get to, or even a state tournament, you know. Um, I mean, the amount of media attention and interviews and just, you know, just people wanting to see our team play, um, I think is going to be good for us, no matter what the outcome is. Being, being in that experience, uh, you you can't really – it's hard to recreate in a practice. You know, I, I when, when Coach Salzman and I set this up, two months ago we had no idea that the week before it, we would be you know one or two, one and two or whatever we are uh in the rankings and both undefeated so um you know but being able to play ashland and being able to play lexington catholic uh two two very very good basketball teams will only help us in the postseason so coach i mean how to, i just say you say go try to go play one and one but how do you keep your kids from looking ahead at with everybody else with the hype you know everybody's reaching out to you everybody's probably reach out to the kids how do you keep the kids focused on tomorrow's game and friday's game and then worry about saturday yeah we we tried to get out ahead of it you know as we as we started playing uh you know obviously there were no summer games there was no scrimmage games so everybody kind of went into this thing blind but, you know, as we played some inter-squad games, just blue-white games in the preseason, uh, I just kind of had a feeling that we might be, you know, we, we might have something special here. Um, so we just had a ton of confidence in our guys, and then we just tried to inject them with confidence every day in practice. But, you know, we've, we've tried to get out ahead of the mental game of it. And uh, one thing we talked about early in those first meetings is, is this is where we want to be as a program. You know, we want to be – when we come play you, we want it to be your, you know, pack the gym night. We want it to be a special occasion and, and uh, you know, just kind of it's what we work for. It's what we earn. And we've had every, you know, w- with Reed, obviously, we're getting a ton of attention. Um, but, you know, two weeks ago, we had Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated in our, in our gym, you know, doing a story on us in our locker room. You know, I mean, that stuff just doesn't happen. And I think these guys have really just gotten used to having – um, they're just used to the attention now, you know, and they don't even, they don't even blink with it. It's like, Oh, okay. Sports Illustrated's here today. You know I mean? It's just, it's just the old hat to them now. So uh, hopefully that will continue as we go along. Now, coach, you guys are sitting on top of the region, you know, last season you lost in the first round of the region tournament to a uh, eventual champion, Knox central gave them all they wanted. What's your goals and how do you plan on eclipsing that and moving forward on to say the six sweet 16? Yeah, I've said this before. I mean, the road, the road to up arena for us, you know, has to go through the 13th region first and that's Knox central uh, first and foremost. I mean, they, um, you know, they're the, they're the back-to-back defending champions, you know, they've won this thing and it's, it's their region until somebody takes it away from them. But as you look at it, you're going to see a 13th region tournament that's going to have eight teams that have a chance to win three games. And I really believe that uh, there's a lot of balance. You know, whoever wins it is going to have to play well. A uh, year of COVID where, you know, fan limitations, all that, we play at the arena down in Corbin on a bigger court. So there's just a ton of things that go into it. But, you know, we're just going to try to get in that regional tournament and we're just going to go with the same approach that we've uh, we've taken all year. And that's just try to win the next one and and stay focused on it. You know, I think – Every kid that grows up in Kentucky and every coach that's coaching a high school team right now has a dream of playing in Rupp Arena and coaching in Rupp Arena, you know. And, um, you know, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a goal of ours. You know, I think that's I think that's part of why you do it, you know. So, um, would love to get there. But, you know, a lot of things got to go right for you to win three games like that in a regional tournament. And uh, hopefully we'll be playing our best basketball here in two weeks and have a, have a shot at it. Now, do you think you gained from your experience of dealing in what some would say was one of the harder regions in the state that, that coming from the 11? Mm-hmm. Is there anything that's kind of taught you or prepare you for this? Yeah, I think it's a culmination of all of it. You know, all, obviously, the more experience that you have, uh, the better coach you become. You know, I, I remember my first regional tournament, uh, you know, LCA hadn't been to the hadn't been out of the district for 27 years. And we finally broke that door down and went and played against Madison Central, a team we beat we we did beat earlier in the year. And Alan Feldhaus Jr. made me look like a look like a little grade school kid out there. You know, <laughs> I mean just, you know, those guys that have been there and have been through the battles. Uh, you know, you got Tony Petrosky at Corbin and um, you know, Coach Patterson at Knox Central, Mike Jones at Harlan, all those guys have been where we want to go, you know, where I want to go personally. 
uh, you know, but you just take a little bit from all of those experiences and, and hope that you make the right decision at the right time. But, you know, I think coaching's a lot of times overstated, you know, I mean, if we don't have Reed Shepard and Ryan Davidson out there. I'm, I'm not a very good coach and you're not, we're not talking right now, you know? So hey, coach, let me ask you a question. You spoke about the COVID being a COVID season and stuff. Has, has the fact that you haven't had large crowds probably been a good thing for your players and for the, you know, for the attention that they, they, they garner everywhere to go. Well, I mean, it, it would be awesome. I and mean, I haven't gone anywhere and we haven't played in a gym yet to where someone hasn't said, coach, if it wasn't COVID, we would have sold this out tonight. You know, I think um, with Reed and the way our team's playing, the way they handle themselves, we would have had great crowds. And, you know, that's the one thing that, you know, I wish was different about this season, but it sure beats the alternative of us uh, not playing, you know, which was on the table at one point. So, um you know, I think this year it's been kind of funny. I almost think we're better on the road. We played a lot better on the road for whatever reason. Um, so, you know, I think now everybody's learned to adapt and, you know, the wearing mask on the bench and the funny way the benches are and all that. I think everybody, it, it will actually be a little odd when we get back to normal at this point. We've done it so long. So, um, you know, the, the coin toss instead of a jump ball, you know, it's just a lot of crazy stuff, but uh, it's kind of become common nature. Uh, to this point, that, that coach man, this is this like I say, you speak about you probably two of your best players are sophomores, coach. So I mean, the sky's the limit for the next two years, this year and the next two years with this program. Uh, I mean, is anybody else in the range you you, you spent the big things out of coming up behind these two these two studs? Yeah, I mean, Brody Brock is another sophomore that um, is a tremendous basketball player. He's a sophomore. He actually scored thirty three points. Uh, in our Pulaski County game the other the other day, you know, our our freshman team last year that are sophomores now won the uh, the freshman regional tournament without Reed and Ryan last year. So uh, Clay Sizemore, you know, just absolutely shoots it uh, shoots it well. And uh, Caden Harris, you know, is our is our six one post player, but just does a tremendous job. But you know, we've got four or five other guys that are sophomores that have come in uh, to help this year. We had one lone senior on the team this year, and he's missed. Um, all but about three or four games with the broken uh, tibia or uh, fibula, sorry, broken fibula. So he's just now getting back. He's our best defender. So, you know, I feel like uh, got a, got you young guys coming back, obviously, but if there's one thing I've learned is you just never know from year to year. Absolutely. Coach Valentine, thanks for joining us today, man. Good luck to you on the rest of the season. I appreciate it, and thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on tonight. Coach, great interview with Coach Valentine, man. Like I said, I remember from the days of LCA, Turned the LCA program down, had them very, very successful coach. So he's looking, he's keeping it going here in North Florida, coach. And he also, like I said, he, he gave the keys away to an old Lexus and picked up a brand new Benz, coach. Somebody's lucky. Now, for this game, we also got to revisit with our man. Last time we talked to him, he was coming up on becoming Lexington, Lexington Catholic's career scoring leader, Mr. Ben Johnson. <laughs> Johnson, what's going on, sir? How you doing? What's up? What's up? How we doing? What's happening? Man, so you know you just passed. Last time we talked to you, you were in the hunt for the career leading score. You know, y'all had a COVID break. Things kind of slowed down. Boom, you get Mr. Cryer and the career point scoring leader. Man, tell us about your last few weeks, man. Man, big couple of weeks. You know, we added uh, John McCreer, uh Big help to us, you know, 6'9", super athletic, you know, great shot blocker, great rebounder, you know, really brought our team to the next level. And then, yeah, obviously made it to the top of the the leaderboard on the all-time leading score, which is huge. You know, there's a lot of big names out there. You know, it's an incredible feeling. Now, was that like a relief when you, you know, you kind of glad to get that over with? Uh, yeah, and definitely, definitely. You know, I've I've been I know I knew I was close, so like I've been kind of pushing for it for a while now, and so to finally get it, you know, it's huge. You know, and now I can just focus on uh get get in the ring. So, B, man, let me ask you a question. It kind of followed what Coach Truck said. So, you know, you speak about it, you got it over there. Do you feel like it was? It was. Do you feel like it, it still wasn't your big goal? Your big goal still to get this team to the state championship game? Uh, definitely. That's that's I mean. As long as I can remember, I've always wanted, you know, play at Rupp Arena, you know, I, my both my brothers played, uh, 
Tanner, my oldest brother, he made it to Rupp Arena his senior year. And I remember just going to the games and being like, dang, like this is this is awesome. You know, I can't wait to be a part of this. And my whole life I've been battling to get there. You know, I think this is our best shot to get there this year. And that's the ultimate goal. You talk about McCreary the transfer, you know. Man, did you just kind of show up to practice and here you are, you got a 6A post player, man? 6'9", yeah, coach, 6'9". I'm sorry, 6'9". I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm hearing there's a transfer from Michigan and stuff, like all this stuff, and then, you know, I kind of see him shows us to practice one day, and I'm like, all right, like, I think this dude could probably help us. You know, the next week he's kind of coming into practice, practicing with us, building with the team, and then a week later he's hooping with us, and I'm like, all right, like, I think this dude can really help us. You know, I, I think he can take us to the next level. Now, you being the leader of the team, how did you help, you know, with his transition as far as bringing him into the team? You know, just told him to talk. You know, uh, everybody out here just wants to win. You know, just stay in your role. Do what you do best. You know, we got people that score. We got people that rebound, people that block shots. You know, just figure out where you fit in these next couple of weeks. You know, that way we're ready for the postseason. The being man, not to look ahead, you know, uh, you had a big game coming this Saturday. All right, of course, North Lord led by Reed Shepard, who put up remarkable numbers. His career kind of mirrors yours, you know, the young starting early on, putting up a lot of sets like you did, and you continue. Do you feel like this is like a personal battle, one on one, to get to show what you can do, or do you feel like you, you understand where he's coming from, being being a young phenom, phenom yourself? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, people are saying, you know, one and two in the state, me and Reed, you know, uh, I think it's a huge game. You know, I'm really excited for it. I always love to go out and uh, challenge my myself, play against the best people, you know, kind of see where I stand. And uh, I'm really excited for it. I think me and Reed are going to have going to have a battle, you know, and I'm excited to see who comes on top. Now, like Coach Bue said, you know, is there any, I guess, advice you would have for young Reed, you know, as you're exiting your career? And he's essentially starting here. Right, you know, just uh, probably trust your teammates. You know, I've, I've seen Reed's game. You know, he's, he's a good player. He scores from all three levels. Uh, great shooter, can finish. You know, he's got good athleticism. Uh, you know, he's, he's a good facilitator. You know, I would just say keep working, you know, keep grinding. The sky's the limit for him. Absolutely, man. Before we let you go, I know we had your early season. We talked about your career has been – do you still feel like you you under radar? Do you still feel like you got to play with a chip on your shoulder? Are uh, you spoke about coming to a school early on because you didn't want to go deal with the whole process? Do you still feel like you have something to prove to a lot of people on on a personal level, as far as with your game? Yeah, definitely. You know, I always kind of I kind of always want the pressure. You know, I always want that chip on my shoulder. It makes me work just like that much harder. So like, I want people out there kind of down me, kind of you know, thinking I'm not good or whatever. I always want to go out there and make sure and uh, improve myself. Makes me work harder. Yeah, man, I'm a big fan. I've enjoyed I me. Mean, y'all going to put on a show, y'all. I just know y'all going to put on a show. <laughs> do you know him personally? Like, do y'all know, like, uh, you know AAU or something or anything? No, nah, I I I've never really talked to him, honestly. We played once back in a in the summer league, like, mm -hmm. last year, two years ago. So, but that, that, that's I, I, This is one of the most hyped games I've ever been a part of personally and honestly the most hyped high school game I've seen in my life. <laughs> so are you excited, man, or is this just another game for real? Man? I'm I'm definitely excited, you know, like one and two in the state, like I said, uh kind of sees kind of see where we stand among mm -hmm. among the top teams and stuff. So I think this is kind of a battle for who's the favorite going into the state tournament. So I'm really excited for it. Hey man now, you know, coming out of this, you're going to have a target on your back. You pull this one off. They could be looking for Bia Jossie and Kathy. I could be the, be the, be the hunted. No doubt. No doubt. I kind of I kind of want that target. I, hope I want everybody to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my guy. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Don't worry about who don't like you. I'm going to keep beating you. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, a lot of people need to follow that, young man. <laughs> something, something good. Or early yeah, and it's been a, a, a pleasure watching you over these four years, watching you get to this point in your career, man. And, like I said, big game tomorrow. I know it's big games ahead trying to get to the state championship, but Saturday is definitely going to be a big one. Wish you all luck, man. Good luck to you in the rest of your season. Coach, man, great interview with Ben Johnson. First thing I got to say, Coach, make sure you tag him in. It's called Davon Davis. As much as you shot the ball, I figured you'd be the all-time leading scorer. But, hey, my guy Ben Johnson, impressive career uh, at, at Catholic, probably one of the best-kept secrets in the state. He's just been – been consistent this whole time, Mary Coach. So congratulations to him on, on a great season and 
Ooh, Coach, I'm excited about this game Saturday, Coach. I'm that's, excited, that's... Coach. So, Coach, man, Catholic versus North Laurel, Ben Johnson versus Reed Shepard. Coach, I'm going to tell you who I got off the top, Coach. Give me Ben Johnson, Lexington Catholic, baby. We win and we riding, Coach Salzman. I got your back, man. Coach, for one time in your life, I have to agree with you because give me the old school veterans, Ben Johnson and company, Coach. All they do is win, Coach. Give me them. All guys. right, man. Also, this Saturday on the 6th in Prestonsburg, we want to give a shout out to the, okay, the Kentucky Prep Showcase presented by Appalachian Wireless, hosted at Prestonsburg High School, put on by Jet 2 Sports, man. It's going to be a full day, as you can see, session one, session two. Of all basketball going on, man, make sure you check that out. Absolutely. That should be big for the state, Coach. That should be big. And, Coach, man, before we close out, we want to let you know our Sunday conversations are up from the previous week's, Coach. They've been doing pretty good. Make sure you get on there and check those out. Make sure you share, subscribe, like, and follow us on all social Coach, media. I interviewed this Sunday is Coach Ryan, is Coach Ryan Montgomery in the Kentucky Indiana Alliance and for athletes, Coach. Blue Grass. Let me talk about that Blue Grass Showcase coming up March 20th at Kentucky State University, the Kentucky State University coach at Alumni Stadium from 5 to 8.30 p.m. Coach, it should be big. The prices are below on the flyer here, as you see. Make sure you get your young man registered for this. should be a great event, Coach. These gentlemen do a lot for the community. Yes. Kentucky, I mean, Lexington, Louisville, Indiana area. So please, please, please make sure you get out there and support them and check this out. Now, we checked them out last year during this COVID thing going on. They were one of the first ones to have a showcase, man. It was huge. A lot of who's who's there. They represent well, man. This is also going to be a good chance to check out Kentucky State's newer facilities. They've been upgrading. Make sure y'all check that out. Man, as always, there should be a little donor. I'm Coach Bue, my main man, Coach TB on the side. Coach Truck, anything else? Peace. <laughs>